Hello lovely year sevens and year eights. Um, welcome to Food and Nutrition. I haven't yet met you yet as a rotation which I can't wait to see you when we finally get back to school. Uh, however, I want to bring you a demonstration today of how you're going to make your stuffed peppers from my own alfresco kitchen. So, first things first. If you're working at home you must always make sure that your parent or carer has given you permission to cook and that they are either at home with you or they are supervising you or they know that you are cooking. If you haven't got their um, agreement to cook then please wait until either you do have or just complete the theory work for this week. Now if you're in the food room I'd be making sure that you knew exactly how to cook and how to get set for cooking. So the first thing I want to tell you is if you've got an apron at home you need to make sure you've got your apron on. You need to, and not just because of the days we're in at the moment, but you need to wash your hands before you start cooking and any time that you touch any foods that are things like raw chicken or raw fish. You won't be doing that today, but any time you need to, go, stop this video, go wash your hands. If you've got an apron, put it on. If your hair touches your shoulders, you need to tie it back to make sure that we are safe to cook because although we're not going to be using the hob today and the hob is the top of the cooker, we need to make sure that we're not losing hair. Do you know that you can lose up to about 200 hairs a day from your head? And I don't know about you, but I hate finding a hair in my food when you take it out and it's like, oh, it's just the worst thing ever. So tie your hair back. The next thing you need to do is whatever you use at home to clean your surfaces. Now at school we have black bottles of antibacterial spray that we use. At home I've got some antibac spray here and a cloth. So I'm going to spray my surfaces down and I'm going to wipe them with the antibacterial spray. Ask your parent on care and or carer as to what they would like you to use and you can follow their guidance on that one. Once you've done that I want you to collect the equipment and the ingredients that you need for this lesson or this practical. So ingredients you're going to need a variety of vegetables. If you're just making the um, vegetable couscous, then you don't need a whole pepper. But if you are making the stuffed pepper, you will need a whole pepper that we're going to stuff, and I'll show you how to do that near the end. You need an assortment of vegetables that don't take lots and lots of cooking. So the vegetables that don't take lots of cooking that I've chosen today is an onion, and this is what I've got in my fridge. So use up what's in your fridge. Don't go out shopping, especially for ingredients. I've got an onion here. If I had a spring onion, that would be fine. If I had some leek, that would be fine. I've got some tomatoes. Now I've washed these off under the cold tap to make sure that they are clean. I've also got a little bit of pepper that I'm going to put into the couscous for flavour. Again, it's not an awful lot. It's probably about the, an eighth of a pepper. That has been washed previously. I've also got a stick of celery because it's a bit sorry for itself and it needs using up in my fridge. I've washed that ready to go. I've also got a courgette here, which I've washed. It's ready to go. Again, it's in my fridge. I haven't gone out specially for this. Now, if you've got some dried fruit at home, you're welcome to add a little bit of dried fruit in this recipe. So I have got here about six dried apricots. However, if you don't have apricots or if you don't like them, either don't add them in or you could add other things in. For example, you could use some sultanas, dried cranberries, anything that you fancy could go in here. That's the, that's the vegetables that I'm going to be using. You need to make sure that you get those prepared, washed and ready to go. Not the onion, don't wash an onion. We're going to peel it. You then need some equipment. You're going to need a measuring jug and a spoon. You're also going to need a stock cube. Now I don't mind which type you, you have at home. It might be that you use a stock cube that's fairly hard when you touch it. Or it might be you use stock pots. They're a bit more like a paste. Either of them is fine and you'll treat them in exactly the same way. They're going to get dissolved into some water later. So measuring jug, spoon, a large bowl to mix everything together in. A small bowl so that you can put your couscous in here while you're preparing your vegetables and it's absorbing liquid. You will need some scales. Yours may be electronic, they may not be. Mine are. If yours aren't and you're not sure how to use them, please check with your parent or carer. You'll also need a little bowl to put your peelings in. And you'll need, if you've got apricots, a pair of scissors to chop those up. And you need a chopping board. And you need a knife, a sharp knife. Now please, please check with your parent or carer at home to make sure they're happy for you to be using that. 
and please uh, use it under their supervision. Now the last thing you're going to need is, as well as some bits of cutlery, is a grater because at the end if you want to you can grate some cheese and so you need about 25 grams of cheese to grate over the top. There again, ingredients you need. The last ingredient you need is some couscous. The couscous you need 100 grams of. If you don't have couscous in, don't go out shopping especially for it. You can substitute it for rice or you could substitute it for something else. Speak to your parents or carers at home, see what they'd like you to do. So, I'd like you now to pause this video while um, you collect all the ingredients and all the equipment you need. If you pause it now and then we'll be ready to start. So, lovely, you should now have got everything ready to cook. So, I would like you to go and pop your kettle on to boil. You will need to make sure that it has got some water in it and you need to make sure that it is not filled above the maximum line on the kettle. You then need to switch it on and you need to wait until it boils. I hope lots of you have used a kettle to make your parents or carers drinks at home and if you have, well done, and if you haven't, maybe ask if you're allowed to do that. And what I want to tell you is my briefing on using the kettle, which I would do if we were at school, is to say that the kettle gets very hot once it's boiled. My kettle boiled just a few minutes ago. You need to hold it by the handle only and you need to be aware that all around the outside of the kettle will be hot so you don't touch it. You also need to be aware that out of the spout at the top comes steam. Steam will burn you and you need to make sure that you don't put your hands anywhere near the spout of the kettle. The first thing we're going to do then with this knowledge of how to use the kettle safely is to measure out some liquid, some boiling water or some just boiled water so that we can make stock. So I'm just going to move some of these bits of equipment out of my way. We're going to start with our measuring jug and our kettle. You hold, the measuring, you hold the kettle in your hand by the handle and you pour into the measuring jug. Now in this country, in our school at the moment, we are measuring in millilitres. You will need to look around your measuring jug to find where millilitres are. And you're going to be filling this to 170 millilitres. It is on the recipe that is uploaded into Teams and the Learning Zone for you. You need to not be crouching over while you're pouring, but you need to pour this while you're stood up straight to minimise any risk of you burning yourself. You pour the water from the kettle into the measuring jug and you estimate where 170 millilitres is. That is where I'm thinking 170 is. Once I put the kettle down safely, I'm going to stop and have a little look at eye level and I can see from a distance that that is 150 millilitres. So I'm going to add a little bit more boiling water and stop. I then have a little crouch down and that is indeed 170-ish millilitres. It might be a few millilitres out, that's okay. Your kettle then you need to carefully and safely put away. If however you've got too much water in your measuring jug, and I am sorry because I will freeze a little bit while I'm getting back into the mode of how I do demonstrations. If you've got too much water in your measuring jug, please do not tip it uh, back into the kettle. Some students think that's okay, it's not. You'll end up with a risk of burning yourself. Please, please pour it down the sink till you get the right amount. You're then going to take your stock cube, whichever type you've got, I'm going to use today the hard stock cube, and you put it into your measuring jug, and then using a teaspoon, you're going to give that a quick stir. Now don't worry that it doesn't look like it's doing anything. It will dissolve in the hot water. If your kettle water boiled earlier, it will dissolve in time. You're now going to leave this to one side to let that stop dissolve. If you've got an OXO cube, I'm not sort of promoting OXO, but they crumble in nicely, you can do that. We're now going to do some weighing. So you're going to need to take your scales and you're going to take your bowl that you're going to put your couscous in and you put your bowl on top of the scales. You do not press on with electronic scales until the bowl is on top, otherwise you will weigh the bowl weight and rather than the couscous. So I'm going to turn this on now that the bowl is on top and at Ringwood we measure in grams as do most, uh, we weigh in grams as do most uh, people in the UK nowadays. 
So can you make sure that your scales are on grams? You can often see it as a little G. So now that the bowl's gone on and I've turned it on, it says zero G. If it says anything other than zero G, you need to stop, have a little look again, and maybe check with your parents and carers until you make it zero G. You're then going to take your couscous and you're going to add this until you get to 100 grams of couscous. going to need the second packet of couscous. I'm at 53 grams. Now some students get really anxious if their couscous goes over by a few grams here or there. Please please don't worry if it goes over by up to 5 or 10 grams. It doesn't matter. If you're 5 or 10 grams under, don't worry. If however you're 20 grams over or 20 grams under, you would need to adjust the amount of liquid that you're adding. I'm adding this slowly and carefully, 98, 99, 100 grams. I then take my bowl off the scales and I move my scales. Sometimes students work on top of the scales at school with their bowls on top and actually it just breaks scales so please don't do that. You're then going to take your stock, which is your stock cube and the boiling water Give it a little stir, and if there are any little lumps in there, try your best to lose those. And you're going to then add your stock into your couscous. Now you can see I've still got a little bit of stock paste there, so I'm going to add that in. Stir it once or twice, and then I want you to forget about this. You're going to wash the jug up later but I want you to forget about this couscous and just leave it because this couscous is dry at the moment, like dried pasta and you need to rehydrate it so that it can absorb, so that it will be able to be eaten. At the moment it's inedible but once you've added this water and it soaks up this water it will become edible. I'm going to move that to the side. So the next little stage for us is actually to prepare our vegetables that we're going to use. So I've got my bowl to put any vegetables in when I've prepared them. I've got my chopping board here and my sharp knife. I've got the peelings bowl here, but actually, as I've got a dirty pot which has had stock in, I'm going to use this to put my peelings in and waste. So, starting with my vegetables. I'm going to start with my tomatoes. I've got little cherry tomatoes, it's what I've got in. I'm going to hold them in a bridge grip so my hands are going up and over the top of this tomato like a train going through a tunnel and I put my knife in between so it looks like the knife is the train going through the tunnel and I then just cut them in half. I turn them over and again another bridge grip and I will cut these into quarters. I will do that for all of the others that I have here. With my little piece of pepper that I've got here, I'm going to carefully hold this in a claw grip. So I'm holding it a bit like a bird claw to keep the pepper safe and to make sure that it doesn't slide around. I'm going to cut these into finger sized pieces, carefully making sure that the knife is well away from my fingers and knuckles. Now some students like to cut these one piece of pepper at a time, it's very labour intensive and will take you a long time. If you put a few pieces of pepper together, you're then able to cut through much quicker and much more efficiently. I'm always looking at where my fingers are in relation to the knife to make sure that they are kept well away. This is going to go into my large bowl. Next thing I've got is a courgette which I've washed. I reckon I'm going to use about a third of this courgette, so again, using a claw grip, I'm going to hold this courgette in place and cut it using the knife. I'm then going to put this courgette to one side because I'm going to put that back in the fridge for another day. I am going to take the tiny bit off at the top where it's grow it started growing from the plant. That's going to go in my waist. And then I'm going to hold the courgette in another bridge grip and the knife is going to go through the middle and cut this pepper in half. I now have two flat sides of courgette. 
I'm going to place those on the board and this courgette now will not rock around, which is what I'm after. Using the bridge grip, I'm going to cut the courgette into fingers. It's a very small courgette, this one, so I'm going to cut them into three or four fingers each. I'm then going to keep the fingers together and turn it around 90 degrees and then using a claw grip to hold the courgette in place, I'm going to cut up into chunks of courgette. And I'll do the same with this one. Again, you could do this with one piece of courgette at a time, but it will be a lot more labour intensive. That is going to go into my measuring, into my mixing bowl. Next vegetable I've got is my celery. Now I'm not going to eat the bit at the top with the leaves on it, and you need to trim off the little bit at the bottom where it's come off the celery plant. So that's going to come off. And the little bit at the top, it's got like a little joint. You, you'll see it as a little line if you've got any celery at home. That comes off. It's going to go in my waist. Again, I'm going to turn this so it's a flat surface. And I'm going to, using a bridge grip, hold it in place. I'm going to cut down to make some fingers of celery. Then turning it 90 degrees and turning to a claw grip. Going to carefully slice this courgette into cubes. Or a dice. Again, that's going to go into my measuring bowl, into my mixing bowl. Last thing I'm going to show you before I get onto the fruit is the onion. Now, with an onion, it's got a brown papery skin which you don't eat. So you need to take the top bit, the shoot off your onion. The shoot is where it comes out of the ground. The root is where it grows in the ground. So when I refer to root and shoot. Can you tr please try and find the shoot, which comes out the top, and the root, which is the hairy bit, coming out the bottom. You need to keep the root on at all times, because the root will hold this onion together while you try and chop it. Now, I've got quite a small onion here, and sometimes onions are much, much larger than this. You need to make sure that if it's a large onion, you're probably only going to use about a quarter of it. The rest of it you can keep and use another day. So I'm going to hold it in a claw grip, and slice off the shoot. Then I'm going to peel away the papery skin until I can't see any more brown skin around most of the onion. I think I'm going to have to lose this layer as well because I can see a little uh, mark on this onion so I'm going to peel that open. Now, I've still got my root in place, and on there, there's also, as you can see, just a little bit of skin. That's okay. I'm going to put it on the end that I've just cut off from the shoot. I'm going to do a bridge grip up and over the top, and I'm going to put my knife through the middle, and I'm going to try and cut through the middle of the root. So my root is holding everything in place, and I've got half the root on one half of the onion, half the root on the other half of the onion. Now, because I'm not looking at the amount of vegetables I've got here. I think I'm only going to use half of it. I'm only going to show you one half. So I'm going to, again, using a bridge grip to go up and over the top, I'm going to cut down in the direction of the lines that are on the onion. I am making sure that I don't cut through the root at all, that I keep the root intact. I can't cut down every single line. I need to be quite precise to do that. So I've cut down about five or six lines. I then turn it. 90 degrees, switch to a claw grip, and then again I make a dice, but this time with an onion I'm going to make a finer dice. When I get to the end, the root has held everything together, so I haven't got any more onion I can get off safely. I'm going to put that into my waist. I'm then going to put the rest of this onion that I have chopped into my bowl. Last thing I've got for this particular recipe, I am going to do the tomatoes in a moment when we pause the video. I'm going to take my egg cots and I'm using a pair of scissors that I use just for food, so food scissors if you've got them, and if not you can use your knife that you've been using for your vegetables. I cut them in half and then each half goes into a quarter. Please be careful when you're using a knife 
please be careful when you're using scissors. Okay. These are going to go in with your vegetables. The last thing I want to show you is the whole pepper that you're going to be stuffing. Now you're going to stuff it in halves. So we need to halve this pepper. To do this, we're going to cut it so that we cut through the core of the pepper. We're going to cut down through the core and make it, in, make it go into two halves of equal size. Some people like to cut the top off the peppers to stuff them, and that's okay, but the way we're doing it, it will serve two people and not one. So, I'm going to again use the bridge up and over the top of this pepper, and I want you to cut through the pepper like this, and I want you to try to get a little bit of the core on each side. And there we go, there's our pepper cut in half. Now at the moment we've got lots of pith, which is the white bits inside here, and lots of seeds. The pith and seeds aren't good, so we're going to remove those, but we need to be very careful because we want to make these peppers look like boats that will hold our stuffed, uh, our couscous, and we can stuff our vegetable couscous in here. So to make the boats, I want you to make some cuts um, just above, below the stalk part and you need to be very careful when you do this to try to make sure that you don't cut through the bottom of the pepper so you very gently want to just cut through the little bit that's underneath the stalk here you can then pull out the bits of pith and seeds until you can't see any more uh, pith in there if you've got a few rogue seeds in there like I have Tip it upside down and give the pepper a sharp tap on the board and that removes any seeds. Obviously take the seeds off the board, you don't want those in your food, they might hurt someone's teeth. So again, just to show you again with the second half of this pepper, I'm going to very carefully cut just below where the stalk is but where it's white, being very careful not to go all the way through to the bottom of the pepper. As you can see at the moment that's now got a little bit of uh, a a space there. I then pull out the seeds and the pith and any more seeds and pith that I can find and if I've got any more seeds tap and there's my boat ready. The boats you're going to put to one side you're not going to cut them up any more than this and what I'm going to do is just finish off chopping up my tomatoes and I'll rejoin you in just a moment. Okay, so rejoining you now, I have chopped up my tomatoes to join everything else that's going to go in my filling for my vegetable couscous, so you should find that you have got this now all set and ready to go as well, I hope. You obviously can pause the video at any point you want and make sure that you can cook along with me if you'd like to, or you can just watch the video, make notes on it, whatever works for you best. Now while I wasn't talking to you and I just got myself straight, I've also done the washing up. Part of what we expect you to do in food and nutrition is to wash up after yourself. So I'm really sorry kids, you need to make sure that after checking with mum or dad at home, and they're going to say yes, I know, you're going to need to wash up. Uh, ask them first if you're allowed to, make sure they're happy, uh, but it's a really good skill for you to learn. And even if you have a dishwasher, and we have a dishwasher here, it's still good practice for you to, practice for you to wash up at home. So I have still despite having a dishwasher, washed everything up. You need hot soapy water to do that and some sort of cloth or scrubbing brush to be able to wash up nicely, a dish brush, I don't mean a scrubbing brush, it's something different. Right, so I have then got my vegetables ready for the stuffing. I've got my couscous, which I've left to soak in the uh, stock for about 10 minutes now, I guess, and that has absorbed all of the water. If you've measured and weighed everything accurately, you should find that your couscous is like a little sandy beach. Nearly, it will look sandy in a minute. I've also got my two boats of my um, peppers, which I've made, okay? So, I'm gonna take my couscous, which at the moment is looking quite solid. And I'm gonna take a fork, and I'm gonna use it a bit like a rake, just to break up some of those lumps in the couscous. And once I've done that, and there's not many, oh dear. That's not good, is it? I'll to clear that up later. Once I've done that, I'm going to add my couscous into my mixing bowl with all of the vegetables. 
Now a fork's not the best implement to do that, so I'm going to switch to a spoon. And then I'm going to mix the couscous and the vegetables together. It will look like this and hopefully it will look really colourful if you've got some different vegetables at home. It will look really lovely and colourful. This stage then I'm going to take my boat with my half a pepper and I'm going to put the couscous vegetable mix in. And you need to use the back of the spoon to press it down a little bit. This particular pepper had a lot of cavities and like walls that I need to make sure the couscous gets through. Oh, I've just seen a bit of apricot. I want that in there. The apricot adds a really nice tangy zest to it. And that then goes on to a baking tray. I've only lined mine with foil because my baking tray is very, very old and doesn't look the neatest. I didn't want you to see it. There you go. So I'm going to do the same with the second pepper, just stuffing the couscous mix in there. Don't you love it when technology lets you down? So we just ran out of space on the memory card, so I've just emptied that off and um, back with you now. I think I was just showing you how I'd stuff both the peppers, pop them into a baking tray, and I said to you that you might have some bits left over like this. There's two options of what you could do with this. One, if you've got vegetables in there that you can eat raw, then you're welcome to have this as a uh, salad that you can eat later, um, maybe for lunch another day. However, I've got things in there like the courgette and celery, which I personally would rather was cooked, and the onion. So what I might do for dinner tonight is take another pepper because I've got another pepper and I'm going to cut it in half, prepare it in exactly the same way as the other two peppers and have enough for everyone to have dinner. So if, for example, there's four of you in your family, two peppers would be a bit of stuffed pepper for, both peop uh, for all four people in your family. However, for now I'm going to show you how to finish off these peppers. I'm going to take my little bit of cheese that I've cut up, it's about 25 grams, check your recipe for quantities. And I'm going to take my grater. My grater's seen better days. At school we, we have the same type of box grater, but it's got a handle over the top. And I hope yours has got a handle over the top. Unfortunately, mine's fallen off over the years and I just keep on using it. It's called a box grater because it's in the shape of a box. There are various blades on the grater. And you need to be aware that a sharp knife has one blade. A grater has got so many different blades. So you need to treat this uh, very carefully. You're going to use the large holes on the grater. And you're going to take your grater and you're going to hold it using the handle with the hand that you don't write with. I am right-handed, so I would be holding the handle with my left hand. I'm going to push this firmly onto, um, probably a chopping board would be best. I've got a bit of kitchen roll here. You then take the item that you're grating, in this case the cheese. You press it against the round, large holes on the grater and you push downwards as you're pressing it on the grater. This will grate the cheese now. I'm going to stop at this point because if I carry on you can see that I'm going to grate my fingers. So you need to then move your fingers back away from the grater. I'm hoping that when you made your rainbow wraps last week, or before the Easter holidays, you learned how to grate safely because I did leave you some clips that I said I'd like you to watch. Again, if I carry on grating I'm going to hurt my fingers so I move my fingers backwards and carry on grating. Now it will come to a point where if I continue I'm going to hurt myself. So at this stage, either say that's enough, I'm going to leave it there, or if you've got some parents or carers on standby, they might be able to just grate that last bit of cheese. But I don't want you trying to do this because I don't know if you've ever grated your finger, but it really, or your knuckle, it really hurts. Then I'm going to take my grater off the top. Now, when you're washing this up, if you've got a dish brush at home, you're going to use a dish brush on this. Because of the blades, you're going to make sure that you don't get your hands anywhere near this with a dish cloth. With my cheese then, I'm going to take my pepper and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cheese on the top. Now I've got more cheese than I need here, so I'm going to use the rest of this cheese for my other two peppers that I'm going to make in a minute. Okay. Now you're then going to put these into the oven. I'm going to do mine for dinner, which is a bit later on today. So I am going to preheat my oven when I'm ready to cook them to about gas mark 5, 180 degrees, depending on whether you've got gas or electric ovens. I'm then going to carefully, and with my adult or carer, parent, carer, adult watching me, or doing it themselves, going to put it into the oven using a pair of oven gloves. 
you then need to give them about 20 minutes. In 20 minutes in the oven at that temperature, the pepper will start to get softer, the cheese will melt, and it will then hopefully be a nice delicious dish. When you're taking them out of the oven, please remember to use oven gloves to take them out and it would be safest if you asked your parent or your carer to do that for you. Meanwhile, these are finished. The next job for you is to go away to make these stuffed peppers. Hopefully they'll look even better than mine. And then you're going to get them onto the baking tray and you're then going to do your washing up for me. I'll be back with you in a couple of weeks for another cook along. Thank you.